coming up on City Spotlight. We're back on location in Martinsville as we talk education in Martinsville. Victoria Norton, Martinsville Elementary School Principal, Sherry Conmacher, Martinsville School District Nurse, and Jeff Thompson, Martinsville Junior Senior High School Principal, share how the current school year has gone in Martinsville and how the community of Martinsville has worked together to make this school year possible. Plus, they look ahead to the startup of high school sports in Martinsville. The focus is on Martinsville schools on this latest episode on Martinsville, here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location once again here in Season 7, and we are back at a familiar place. Martinsville Elementary School for this new episode on Martinsville. We'll tape both segments here at Martinsville Elementary School as we tape here at the uh, third week of the final week of February 2021. And to help us out, we first of all welcome back to the program Victoria Norton. She's the Martinsville Elementary School principal. Victoria, great to see you again. Thank you for having me. And first time guest here on City Spotlight, Sherry Conmacher. She's the Martinsville School District nurse. Sherry, pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. Great to be back here in Martinsville, as the last time that we taped here in Martinsville was almost a year ago uh, from when we're taping here. It was March 13th, 2020. I think many people in Illinois probably know what that day was. We were last here taping in the morning. Uh, an art fair was going on in Victoria, and uh, then that afternoon things changed a little bit. <laughs> changed very rapidly. So uh, before, we, before we get into that aspect and how things are being taught here in Martinsville, Sherry, you're a first time guest to the program. Tell us about yourself. I am a nurse. I've worked in healthcare for 20 years, um, and I've been a nurse for 15. I uh, worked at an acute care hospital, um, cardiac, cath lab, those kind of things, had been in management, um, and just recently in September, uh, decided to make a change and become a school nurse. And we're going to ask you about those experiences sure. uh, in just a little bit. Uh, Victoria, a lot has changed uh, in the nearly year since uh, we, uh, we last taped here with you guys and aired the episode on Martinsville back in 2020. How's it been going and uh, how, are you guys, how have you guys been educating? It has been an interesting 11 months, as you said. March 13th, 2020 um, was a day that we didn't realize we wouldn't see our kiddos after that. We had our fine arts day that you were here taping that morning and uh, so proud of the kids and the wonderful activities that they got to do that day for music, art, and dance. And boy, have things changed <laughs> in those 11 months. We are very grateful. We have been in-person learning since August. Not all area schools have had that opportunity, but we feel so fortunate to have been here uh, in person. We started out the beginning of the year with about 10% of students who chose to do the remote option. But as we got back to school and we saw no school-based transmissions and they saw that we were doing things safely and we re had a good reopening plan, We've really whittled that number down, and we're at less than 5% of our students who, are, uh, who chose the remote option. And not to dive into how you finished off last school year, but uh, how has it gone so far this school year? So far, I think it's been wonderful. You know, I, I believe that parents had a lot of concerns about their children. I heard many parents say, my kid will never wear a mask. My kid will never be able to do that. And I will tell you, I am so proud of our students. They wear their mask faithfully every day. They distance as best they can. We felt like from about March to uh, June, things were pretty silent from the Illinois State Board of Education, the Illinois Department of Public Health. But quickly in July, that all changed. I and mean, we had hundreds of pages of guidance to sift through, try to figure out our own reopening plan here in the district. So uh, we took a look at those. And one of the things that they said to do is to try to do the six foot distance between desk or as best you can. And I'll be honest, some rooms we do have six feet distance. <laughs> Other rooms that it's a little bit, you know, larger population, we did the best we can. 
And I think that has uh, really helped us be able to keep the kids here and in person. We've really stressed hand washing. We have really stressed, you know, cleaning. Uh, you know, the kids uh, kind of adopted the scrub in, scrub out mentality that you see at hospitals sometimes. <laughs> yes. uh, and they know before they go to a location, they got to scrub in before they go. When they leave that location, they scrub out. So, you know, just little things like that. Uh, we had a great kickoff. We had our school mascot, who is Big Blue. I think you actually got to see him in one of your mm -hmm. episodes. Right. And he <laughs> did a lot of videotapes for us in July, in the wow. beginning of August, before school began, about how to wear a mask safely, how to hand wash properly how to social distance, how to use supplies in a classroom right. safely. And we shot those videos um, and we pushed those out to families and, and to the kiddos so they could see them in advance. And I really think just approaching it like that with the safety aspect in mind, we weren't scaring the children. And mm -hmm. I think they just knew when they hit the door, oh, this is how I have to do it now. And I think that early training was really key for us to be able to get started and keep going since then. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having a moment here. I'm smiling through the mask yes. and how adorable that must have been to have the school mascot. And yes. The little kids, I have a couple of young kids myself, how they probably enjoyed that very much. It made yes. it fun for them to learn how to Absolutely. do what they need to do. Sure. Sherry, you are our first K through 12 nurse health person yes. on the program. Uh, you said you joined the school district here in September. Mm -hmm. What has your time this school year been like for you? <laughs> hopping between the two schools here in Martinsville. Well, you know, I, I was thinking about that, and, and I think adaption um, is, is the key word there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen that in the school. I've seen that through the administration, the students, um, the teachers, and the staff, and for me, too. Um, from a hospital setting, um, you know, it's not a... a a big surprise to deal with illnesses and viruses and things like that. We're, we're used to that. Not to the scale that it's been with a pandemic, but you know, we, we made that transition smoothly there at the hospital. And so coming into an environment where that's not the norm, uh, you're not really sure what you're gonna see. And um, they have just done a fabulous job. They've taken that guidance and done what's best for the students and for their families and things like that. And then as new information comes along, as things change, <laughs> as they always do, you know, they have adapted to those changes and, and met those needs for our students. You're working as the school district nurse. Yes, sir. So you're hopping between the two buildings. <laughs> yes, sir. You're working alongside people mm -hmm. like Victoria, mm -hmm. Mr. Thompson, who we'll have on uh, from the junior senior high mm -hmm. school. Uh, what is that like, like a day like you're taping with, uh, with us here in the morning? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to go over to the junior high school, at, at senior high school at some point. Mm -hmm. What is a day like for you? <laughs> um, it's, it's great. It's, it's exciting. Uh, getting to work with all of the children. Um, I have five children myself, and uh, two of them have already graduated through the, the school district, so mm -hmm. they've, they've been through that. I still have two in the school district and one that will be hopefully starting next year. Sure. Um, so it, it is great to work with the different kids. I, I laugh, um, you know, I, I worked with a lot of older patients, and so the energy level with the kids is so much different, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. and, and it's fun and it's encouraging. Um, there's a lot to learn, and I, I like being able to go to both units because, because both sites have different needs. Um, as students get older, there's more complex um, situations and, dis and information that they need and education that they need. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity. Both of the, the principals are so welcoming and, and so helpful and supportive. And so that, that makes a big difference. So. And uh, to have to implement new things into the day, and I'll ask mm -hmm. Victoria here in just a second what her daily grind is like, um, having to follow these, in addition to educating mm -hmm. all, these, all these students, K through 12 in the school sure. district, how has how has everybody from your eyes been able to follow all these protocols? I tell you, the one of the first questions I asked Mrs. Norton when I, when I first started was, "How are the kids doing with the mask?" And she she said, "The kids are doing great." <laughs> You know, it, it's the adults that, yes. that struggle. You know, and, and it's true. Isn't that true? Hard, hard to teach you know, a old dog new tricks. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> learn a new habit. Yeah. Exactly. So the the kids do so well, and, and they adapt so easily. But that that's the one thing that I, I really find impressive about the the staff here is their ability to adapt. Mm -hmm. And so you know, as things have gone on, um, we started with a process with education that you know, the school thought was what needed to be done, some guidance from the Illinois Department of Health and, and ISBE and those kind of things. And after that first round of having exposure, um, we, there were several students that, that had to go into quarantine for that. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed with how they looked at that. 
and how they address those needs. And the next time that there was an exposure, there was only a handful of students. And it was that ability to adapt. So um, it's constant, it's changing, and that's probably education as it is. It's how healthcare most definitely is. Uh, we've been able to do some great things. Uh, recently, we have the ability to do the rapid um, test, and that has been very helpful yes. for our staff and for our students. Uh, and, and working with the schools, it's, it's really nice. We have an opportunity to have them come in um, in the morning after things have kind of settled down, and they kind of do a drive through and we go out and we can test them, and then they can um, get those results, and the student can return to school sooner. Uh, unique perspective, having a school district nurse on the program. Thank you for that kind of behind the scenes of how things have been working. Mm -hmm. Victoria, and something too, I want to uh, kind of dovetail what she said. It's, it's not only help the students return mm -hmm. sooner, but because of the guidance from ISB and the IDPH, students who had siblings, they all mm -hmm. had to go home yes. if there was you know, a suspect case. Mm -hmm. So now those students can remain at their school mm -hmm. and their education is not disrupted at all, exactly. either for a quarantine exposure or waiting 48 hours for a test you know, at, a, at a healthcare site. Mm -hmm. So having that program has really benefited um, even the kids that aren't necessarily you know, ill mm -hmm. or you know, they just have some kind of a, a family member who, who might be uh, you know, experiencing some difficulties there. So it, it's been great to be able to keep those kids in school. Yes, I can. Been. I can relate to you. I have, you said you have five kids. I have four <laughs> kids. So when one is impacted, they're all impacted. <laughs> exactly. The waiting game, it's uh, been a unique experience. Yes. Victoria, uh, we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. Can you tell us about your daily grind? You're uh, a principal, a leader of a building. What is what is each day like for you? Well, pre-K through six, it's something different every day. Yeah. Um, I would say pre, pre-COVID, pre-pandemic, I would get hundreds of hugs a day. I still get a few when I don't see them coming from behind, you know, <laughs> but, you know, so that's changed just a little bit. But just coming up with new schedules, new changes in uh, procedures, practices, how we do things, that really changed a lot. But as Sherry said, the staff were able to adapt so quickly. And as new guidance came out and changes came out, I may have told them to do something on Monday, and on Tuesday afternoon I was telling them to do something different. By the time Friday comes, I'm saying, scrap that, we have to do something different. <laughs> All because the information was coming so quickly mm -hmm. and you know constant changes. So I've just been so fortunate that the staff have been willing to, okay, I'll change it again. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids just have been going with the flow. So we, we really tried all summer. Our district leadership team met with our staff to come up with a plan to, you know, to reopen our schools and how to do it. And one of the things we kept saying is we wanted to be as similar as possible to normal mm -hmm. for our kids, even though we're not living in normal times. And really, for the most part, I'm guessing if you were to ask some students, it is normal. Probably the only thing that's a lot different is we're telling them to wash their hands more often, and they're wearing this mask. And this thing in front of our face. Exactly. <laughs> and I think they've adapted quite well for that. Wow, great perspective there. And I'm sure we'll hear similar comp comments from uh, junior, senior high school principal Jeff Thompson here in just a bit. Final question for both of you, and I'll have Sherry go first, then Victoria. Talk about your community and how everyone has worked together to make this school year possible. Sure. So there have been so many changes within the community um, and the school going through this. The parents have been supportive, um, adapting also, uh, accepting those, listening to the guidance, saying, well, I thought last week it was... <laughs> It was a little bit different, exactly. it was, we explained to them. Um, reaching out to our local physicians to update them when we do get new guidance. Um, and, and they've been receptive and made the needed changes, uh, sometimes requiring different documentation and things like that, and, and they've been so helpful. The Illinois Department of Health, um, our local health department has just been great. Um, they have been communicating with us, working with us, trying to get a process that, that works for all of us. So it has really been truly a group effort. Um, and just most recently when we started having sports again, I mean, that was huge. Uh, we are so thankful for our students and we think that's a great opportunity for them, but it, w it was a big change and, and parents have been wonderful yes. in supporting and so has our community. Thank you very much. Yeah. Victoria? I totally agree with that. Uh, this summer, again, when our leadership team was looking for ways to open, we know we wanted to provide mask breaks. And from beginning when we started in August with our students all the way to December, I think we might have been inside two or three days for our PE and our music and our recess. 
and that's an amazing opportunity for the kids to get out, get that mask off, mm -hmm. or run around. So we were very thankful for some good weather, but we also could not have done that if it hadn't been for our city and our community members, because we needed outdoor learning areas. So people donated picnic tables so we could strategically place all around the outside. We had tents brought in and put up so kids could have some outdoor learning activity time and so students would go outside and maybe have a science lesson you know it was a beautiful mm -hmm. fall day in august or they went outside for pe or they went outside for music mm -hmm. uh, you know recess time and you know the teachers even love that They're like we get to go outside and have a mask break and to teach as well because it, they found it difficult to teach with the mm -hmm. mask on so we would not have been able to do that without the help of our community members and our city hall who helped uh, bring picnic tables in as well. So it has been a real effort, I think, for the entire community and school district working together that we've been able to say mm -hmm. we've been in person and we've done this since August with mm -hmm. zero school-based transmissions. Martinsville working together, flexibility to the max. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate the perspectives and insight of this school year with Victoria Norton, Martinsville Elementary School Principal, and Sherry Conmacher, Martinsville School District Nurse. Victoria, Sherry, it's been a pleasure having you both on City Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll talk more education here in Martinsville with Jeff Thompson, Principal at the Junior Senior High School here in Martinsville. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Martinsville. And we're back here on City Spotlight, this new On Location episode on Martinsville. We continue taping here at Martinsville Elementary, and we welcome first time to the program in the segment, Martinsville Junior Senior High School Principal Jeff Thompson. Jeff, pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you very much. I sure appreciate it. Great to have another face here in the community of Martinsville on the program. First time guest is Jeff. We're going to talk all about the Junior Senior High School in just a second, but you're a first time guest. Jeff, tell us about yourself, please. Okay. My name is Jeff Thompson. Uh, I have 22 years in education, uh, 15 as, as an administrator, and this is my eighth year here as uh, principal at Martinsville Junior Senior High School. Where are you originally from? I'm from Teutopolis, Illinois. Okay, so you stayed pretty pretty local there? Stayed uh, pretty local. It's a great, great area, and I, this is where I want to be. Okay, and we'll maybe ask you at the very end of the segment uh, about your thoughts about working in the community. Um, so we've been talking here in this episode, mostly education, about uh, the schools here in Martinsville, and uh, it's been a crazy time uh, over the past year, uh, since the last time we were here in Martinsville. Um, Superintendent Rogers was on our very first episode um, a few seasons back, uh, gave us an overview of the school district at the time. I talked a little bit about the junior senior high school, which is not that old. It's about 10 years old. So just tell us a little bit about your building. It's, it's a great building. Uh, we're a small school, so it's, it's a little bit smaller than a lot of other schools, but it's, I might be a little biased, but uh, it, it's one of the nicer uh, high school buildings in the area. Uh, relatively new carpet on the inside. Kids, kids take great pride in it, and uh, they they really help help us keep it to where it is, to the standards where we want it, where it is right now. Obviously, folks that are are from Martinsville uh, are from the area know that uh, a new building needed to be to be built about ten years or so ago, um, and it, at the time was built probably for the future. How was it holding up after ten years? It's it's holding up fantastic. Uh, like I said, you know we got. Typical building issues that we have, but, but it, it's fantastic and, and probably the only problem I can see with it right now is, uh, and it's a good problem to have in, in, in the coming years, we may not have enough uh, locker space. So hopefully our enrollment keeps going up and we have to find places to put new lockers. That couldn't this be said better. I mean, that's a good problem to have. The, the school district is growing. Yes. Very good. Okay. Um, so uh, the school that you have, uh, it's a junior, senior high school together. So you have 7th through 12th graders learning there. Tell us how this school year has gone for you guys and uh, how, how have you guys been educating and how has it gone? We, we have made the decision to be in person all year long. Uh, we've had, from day one, we've been in person. We've had some quarantine, some students quarantine and uh, staff quarantine uh, at different times, but we've gotten through it. It's, it's been great. Uh, kids have been great. Staff has been great. Um, you know, we, we, we try to make it as as a typical as we can, as a, you know, as, as a normal school day. Uh, talked a little bit about Martinsville Elementary in the first segment. Uh, did the whole school, the school district, start at the same time, and and uh, the adaptability of the students and teachers and the entire staff to you know, 
since a year ago, change how you guys do things? Yeah, we've, we've changed, I mean, a little bit. We've, we've moved some classes, some of our bigger classrooms. We've, we've moved to the library. We moved uh, a couple classes to our gymnasium. We've set up tables so we can socially distance better. But other than that, we've, we've gone on the premise that we were going to operate as business as usual. And, and the kids have done a fantastic job of adjusting. A lot of school districts have gone to different uh, amount of days and uh, split their periods up, however you want to call it. Uh, I know in some towns they have like a red day or a yellow day or whatever. Uh, how are students in the junior, senior high school, are, do you have a similar type thing or is everybody going every day? Everybody's going every day. We have shortened our class periods down uh, to 35 minutes uh, per class period. This allows our staff to have some remote planning time for our remote learners um, at the end of the day. Um, our kids, uh, we've, because we have to bounce, our kids have to bounce every now and then. It's the one, diff, one difficult we, we do have sometimes is, you know, just teachers adjusting, having to remember who, who's, who's at home, who's on remote, who's, who's in the classroom. But uh, for the most part, it, it's, we, we've operated on the premise that we're going to do business as usual. We're, uh, folks at home are seeing this for the first time in the latter half of March. So uh, you guys are getting close to the end of the school year. Um, not speculating, but uh, the unforeseen future of, of educating and, and the rest of this year here in, uh, in, in Illinois. Um, optimism for things might look a little, li little bit different in the fall, maybe? I hope so. <laughs> I, 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 the, optimum, the optimum thought is to be back to where we were before this all started. But, you know, we'll, we'll adapt. We, you know, our, our school board and I believe our administration, staff, and like I said, students, everybody, and, and community as well. We have all work together to, to make it work the best we can, and uh, I, I foresee in the future that we will adjust as we have to, and uh, we'll make it the best learning environment for our kids that we can. Are there things that you have utilized during this cra crazy, strange COVID times that you, can, that you can use moving forward? I mean, obviously you wanna go back to the way things were, but are, are there some aspects of what you guys have had to use since the, the fall, the start of the school year, that you can use moving forward? Sure. Um, we've, the biggest thing that we have right now in, in my building, we are one-to-one. -one. So we've gotten Chromebooks for every student that we have in the building. So we'll, we will have those going forward. That, to me, that's the biggest thing. So if a student is not at school, teachers can post, post their uh, lessons to their Google Classroom. That's the format that we're using is Google Classroom. And so they post it to there. And so kids, kids will have more access to their work if they're not at school that day. The availability and uh, the usage of technology, I don't know how much you guys were using it prior to COVID, but uh, it's amazing how it, it, it's being utilized now. And now, is, as you said, going to become a, a regular part of how you guys educate. Yes. Uh, I know most of our, most of our teachers are, are incorporating the Google Classroom, even, even for those students who are in person full time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're incorporating that in their classrooms as well. So Okay, very good. And again, I think I probably already asked it. You probably already stated, again, the flexibility of everyone in the community to make this work. Oh, it's been fantastic. You know, we, we've, had, we've had different people in and out, you know, staff in and out. We've had teachers uh, that helped the custodians when they were out. You know, we fill in, fill in for each other. Someone, you know, it, it's, just, it's just a fantastic school to work for. And, and to be an administrator, in this district is nice because the staff is so willing to to go well above and beyond what their normal duties are just to make things the best that we can okay i've only been able to ask a couple of uh, educators uh so far uh since uh, the announcement of uh high school sports to be able to start back up um is there a little buzz in town about the avail availability for some of those athletes to be able to compete yeah it, it's nice we, we we have a lot of kids that you know that athletics is a big part of their lives and, and for a while at, at the very beginning when we weren't doing anything they were struggling uh, we're starting to get those back now and, you know the community is involved the community's always been involved here with our sports um, even though we they cannot get into into the uh, the games because we have what well, we have limited we allow the parents to come into the Correct. into the games each kid gets two passes to come into the game right but we're we're broadcasting our, our home games Great. And then we are broadcasting as many as our away games as we can get out there to live stream so as many people can see them as possible. And it's, it's you know, it, it, it's, it's been just a juggle with gym times and everything because sports are in different seasons. Right. And our athletic director's done a fantastic job. She, uh, you know, she's probably on her third or fourth time scheduling some of these seasons this year because of, of the changes the IHSA and IESA has made. 
we use the word flexibility, ultimate flexibility right now for all those high school athletic directors trying to cram all those sports into a very small area. And you have a lot of, especially in a smaller school district, you probably have a lot of kids that would be competing in, in multiples. So I, I don't even want to venture into that aspect of <laughs> being able to compete in multiple during this limited time. But uh, wow, a smaller community, high school athletics, athletics in general, a big part of the community. Huge part of the community. And like you said, we have kids that you know, our, our, our football players, our basketball players, and also our baseball players. I mean, they, we got most of our athletes play three sports, so, and they're involved in other, all the other activities at schools, you know, FFA and Scholar Bowl and, and all band, all the other activities we have as well, so. Uh, you said you're, you're from Teutopolis. You, you work in the Martinsville School District. Um, the, again, I'm kind of playing off my last comment or a question to you asking about how athletics is a big part of a small community. Um, the community the size of Martinsville um, the schools are, be the, the importance of the schools is probably heightened because of the, the size of the community. Oh, yes. Uh, I, I would say, you know, it, it's, it's one of the center focal, focal points of the, of the community. And, and, and the community is fantastic. I mean, sports, education, any needs of the school, I mean, we have people volunteering to help us all the time. Uh, you know, reaching out, asking, hey, can we help with this? Can we help with that? And if we, if we need something and we, 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 we bring it up, they're, they're willing to help us in everything we have. So it, it is a fantastic community to, uh, to be working in. And again, that's my, pretty much my final question. Uh, you, you said eight years? Eight years. This is, this is my eighth year. And uh, uh, overall thoughts just on the general community uh, of Martinsville and working here um, and everybody just, again, making all this possible. Yeah, it, it, just fantastic. I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's a small town community and this is, when you think of small town community, this is, this is what you get. I mean, everybody is involved with what's going on and they just, they wanna help and they want the best for the, best for the school and the community. A lot of your comments, Jeff, mirror all the people we've had from the community of Martinsville on this program. We appreciate first time on City Spotlight, principal of Martinsville Junior Senior High School, Jeff Thompson. Jeff, pleasure having you on the program. Thank you very much. And that'll do it for this On Location episode here in Martinsville. We thank you for watching City Spotlight, and we'll see you next time. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.